Okay, cool. I was just having a play with someone asking whether you can use more than one reroll a turn nowadays in the new rules. That's a good place to start as any, as I've just collected the rulebook from Fast on Games in Swindon, pre-ordered. Um, and I went and collected it. I just bought the rulebook rather than um, any of the other swag because I've got over 50 Blood Bowl teams and I've got proxies that could use as Imperial Nobility and as Black Hawks anyway. So no need for those, but I do like a good rulebook. Um, I'm not going to smell it because, you know, we're online and that would be a bit weird. Um, but one thing I am going to do, actually, I'm just going to see if I can... this beforehand but you know no one's watching it anyway I wouldn't have thought um, let's see if we can ah I know what's happened there ah, right okay cool so let's do that as well there we go that's better um, let's go for three on one that one yeah cool okie dokie So I'm just making my face bigger, basically. I was I was off I was off center, and I didn't realize why I was. But then I figured it out just after I started streaming. So there I am. Fantastic. So yes, I do love a rule book. So my plan is today I'm going to go into action with my sharpie. Don't worry, I'm not going to write on the rule book. That would be heresy. Um, and I'm going to um, use some post-it notes. Um, so. Because I can't resist a challenge, I'm going to jump right to the end. This is how I always read the newspaper, actually. So I jumped to the end, and it got the re-roll uh, stuff going on, um, because there was questions about re-rolls. Just going to be... Da, 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 da. So, re-rolls, here we go, an index. I do love an index. This is a fantastic um, thing for the new game um, and makes the rulebook super easy to use. Rerolls, rerolls, team rerolls. Every probable team will have a team rerolls team re to use. They used during the first half of the game of plenty of full at the second half. But unused team rerolls do not carry over from the first half to the second half. Team rerolls can only be used when a team is active during its own team turn. Team rerolls cannot be used to reroll, deviation, scatter and bounce, or armor injury and casualty. When a dice pool is used, a team reroll can be used. When a team reroll is used, all the rules, all the dice in the dice pool must be rerolled, not just those dice that show an undesirable result. So that's quite interesting actually. So we're looking down here on page 24. Um, and it doesn't say in the rules that you can only use one team reroll a turn. I wonder whether that is somewhere else then. So this is really this is what I'm going to try and do today. Basically, is is skip between um, skip between things. So it may be that it is in the team building section. So I'll chip into that one. Da, 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 da. So there's a game record sheet, team rosters, team draft budget, hiring players, dedicated fans, um, purchasing team rerolls. That's really interesting. It doesn't actually say that. Cool, interesting, good, good catch. Fantastic. One thing I will do actually is I will just check that the old Twitch stream is working and that the chat is appearing because I'm using a separate chatty type thing. It is. It's cool. It's a bit shiny, but what can you do? Hey, right. Fantastic. So let's jump back to there. Um, so I might make a list as well. Actually, a list at the same time of things. Um, I will make it on my. Uh, back of my receipt because I'm going to be official of that. I'll type it up later and I'll um, I'll stick it somewhere useful I think because um, that is a definite it, it will be it will be errated it will be a change um, but I'm fairly confident um, but it might be that I don't know where these things are and people might be able to point me um, to it in the rule book. Cool interesting stuff. Right, okay, back to the beginning, I guess, um, where we go. I'm going to introduce my mug for the first time, which has got tea in it. It's my NAF mug, prize possession that I made uh, a few years ago for 
everyone attending the NAF Championships who wanted one. So I might do that again at some point. Cool. Um, so let's skip back to the beginning. So um, I'm not a super fluffy type person, so I'm going to skip through this also because people, it's just for just for reading really. Um, contents are always good, but actually the contents are less interesting than the than the index, I think. Um, so we'll skip over, skip over. Um, so this is all about the establishment of the NAF, and then the NAF are going to die later, but that's all right because the NAF are still around, as we know. Um, cool. So fluff, fluff, fluffy fluff. Some people like the fluff. The guys at both down are a big fan of the fluff. Um, someone's looking into uh, doing a record of all the fluff, and there've been a few retcons um, put in. Oh, that's a nice picture. I like that one. Cool. Um, and then we've got Stadia. So this is talking about the pitch and how you set it up, I guess. Um, yeah, the um, the dugouts are new and um, smaller, which is fantastic. So they fit nicely into a box. I've got a, a, a bag that contains all my Blood Bowl stuff. Um, so and then the, the dugouts were always a bit of an issue fitting into that bag, whereas now they should be a bit nicer, which is cool. Um, scatter template tells you which way round to use it. It's obviously super important. So you've got one, two, three at the top, four, five, six, seven, eight. Some of the other nonsense that we had going on with one at the top and then, oh man, unbelievable. Um, a nice um, thing that's been set out is the corner throw-ins. This was always a, um, um, it was never spelt out in the rules. So people used their own sort of ways of doing it. It didn't make a lot of difference because it was such a random event anyway. It was it, such a such a rare event. Um, but as long as you randomized it, that was all good. Um, but this is actually a really nice way of doing it. You put the scatter template on the um, on the corner and then just use one, two, three as a D3. So whoever thought of that, well done them. Um, so the D3... Yeah, it defines what that is. D16 is defined. Don't know why they stuck with a D16. Could have used a D12, um, especially as the MVP isn't isn't doesn't go to everyone. I don't think. Um, I think I think we'll find later that the MVP now goes to um, a, a limited number of people. Um, so we'll check that. I'm going to check things as I go along rather than just making random pronouncements. Uh, star player points. End of trash. It's not an MVP. Fail for the index. Oh man! So the stuff in here. Um, how do you get star player points? Player advancements. Do, do, do. The aftermath. What do you get star player points for? Mm -mm -mm. Probably says that somewhere. Let's have another look in the index. Let's see how the index goes on with actually looking for things. So I went for star player points, and then I went to seventy to seventy-one. And it told me how to spend star player points. Ah, here we go. This, this tells me what star player points I've got for. Most valuable player. Um, each coach randomly selects one player. Okay, so the D16 is useful for that. Fantastic. But for things that were on the pitch, um, a D12 would have been would have been better. So, But fair enough, we like a D16. All the dice sets have got D16s in, so that's all fine. Then we've got the rules. Um, so we've got a list of turnovers. Um, so they, what they've done here is they've started using capital F and capital O um, for, for falls over and then knock down. Um, so previous editions, I'll, I'll try not to bang on to about previous editions too much, um, but previous editions did. Um, they, I think they just had knock down and place prone, um, whereas now we've got um, falls over as well. So this is turnovers. Ooh, I checked that my pen is working. Yeah, cool. So we've got turn because that is a really useful page actually is to say wait a second is that actually a turnover or is that not so um yeah so we've got we've got falls over um as well as as well as knock down on there um so the, the there is a, ch a change about turnovers is that um uh you kick back on a on a chainsaw and the new projectile vomit is not a turnover anymore and so that's um, a bit silly, um, but good fun, but good good boost for goblins. Um, any change? Any other changes? So they've got fall over and knock down separate. They've still got placed prone as a thing, so most commonly used when wrestling. Um, 
if a player on the active team that has possession of the ball is forced to move off the pitch for any reason. So if you happen to surf your own player, or if you chuck a one of your own players into the crowd, um, then that will be a turnover. Failed pickup is auto turnover as before. Fumble is auto turnover as before. So when you're passing your hand off, if the ball comes to rest on the ground, that's turnover. And as before, um, pass action now mentions deflection and interception, and we'll come to that a bit later because that's a big change. Uh, but both of those are oh, that's interesting. Ah, right. So if a pass action, oh, so it's just an extension of the one before. So if a pass action is deflected, um, which is where you hit the ball down, but you don't actually intercept it, and the ball comes to rest either on the ground or in the possession of the player from the opposing team, then it's turnover. So if you throw the ball and it gets deflected, um, but then it gets sort of knocked down by someone who's in the way and scatters to one of your players, that's not a turnover, which is um, uh, similar to the passing um, uh, mechanic before. A player on the active team that's possession of the ball is thrown by a teammate and either fails to land safely as the card was eaten. Yeah, cool. So if you get eaten, then... Uh, then it's turnover. Foul is a turnover if you get sent off, and if you score a touchdown, that is also a turnover. I'm not sure if that's a. What if that's a change from the original one or not? Can't remember. Doesn't matter. Um, list is not exhaustive, particularly important. Cool. Um, this other one, I'm not going to skip over this. Uh, on this page 23, it says about take backs and changing one's mind. Oh, I've just noticed this as well. Oh, this is a beautiful thing. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Um, so that's <laughs> I need about 20 of these to be honest instead of the bonus notes but but one's not bad I suppose one is if it's on the uh, what would you what would I use one for I'm going to find the most important page of the rule book and I'm going to I'm going to put this in it that's my, my uh, thing that I'm going to do all right uh yeah so anyway important thing in here is take backs and changing one's mind um which is very nice grammar as well there's some dodgy grammar in here somewhere but th this is this is quite nice um is that this has been played in in leagues in every league and, and tournament that i've i've been to uh, basically um which is to say that if you um, change your mind about something um then you can um you could take back your moves as long as you haven't um as long as you haven't rolled any dice you could basically um, take back a move and that's it's nice to have that um as as canon in the in the box in the book so that's groovy. Um, it should say in there, um, don't take the mick too much about that, because you wouldn't want to take like 10 players back if as long as you hadn't like moved because it'd be hard to remember. But there we go. Right. Um, changes here. This is this is sort of setting out the, the parameters. Um, and this is the page I looked at a minute ago, which is about, about rerolls. Because I can't find at the moment... Um, where it says about um, where it says you can only use one reroll per turn, <clears throat> but we'll find that later, no doubt. Um, single dice roll, multiple dice rolls. So a dice pool. So this is a new bit of um, dice. Let's have a look. I'm sorry, go back to that. Yeah, so dice pooling over here. Um, this is a new bit of terminology, which is where you throw two dice when you're blocking. Um, and then you can, um, um, and then you choose one. So that was never called a thing before, but they've attempted to classify some of the rules. And dice pool is a new bit of terminology, which will be referred to in the rules. Um, target number rolls. So that's a massive thing. Um, these weren't um, in this before. Um, and so now they've changed agility so that instead of having an agility, you have a target number for your agility. Um, and then and then you modify the dice roll and compare it to that thing. So it just removes a step. Before you had agility four and you had to take that away from seven. And that was basically your target roll. Um, and now they've changed it so that you have that target roll in the rule book, which is quite nice. Obviously, they've separated. I'm, I'm going to assume a certain level of knowledge, but talk about stuff as well um so i'm gonna so they've obviously introduced the passing stat which we'll get to in a bit when we get to the passing rolls um so yeah so modifying dice rolls you you roll the you modify the dice roll rather than the target so the target is always a thing um if the rules ever instruct you to divide a dice roll in a way any fraction should be rounded up unless the rules state otherwise 
fair enough. It's a good ca good catch all. Um, rules may call for throws to roll a dice, called rolling off, the highest score wins. Uh, in the case of a tie, roll again unless otherwise just instructed. Yeah, for kickoffs, I like to roll about 4d6 because that um, minimizes the chance of just roll, roll all the dice you have and then see what the total is. That minimizes the chance of a draw and having to roll again. Natural six is always a success. Natural one is always a failure. Um, they've expanded that. I think I think that was just on duelties in the old rules, but that is the case. Um, it it says it is not uncommon for this to be the case. So it's not it's not like a a blanket rule. It's just um, some it's flagging it up basically. But I guess that means that it will be mentioned every time that 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 applies. Um, Cool. Rerolls. Second result must always be accepted. A dice may never be rerolled more than once. So, so that's an interesting one. There is an outstanding FAQ, I think, which is that some skills allow you to reroll one dice from a dice pool. Um, but the outstanding question is, if you've rerolled one of the dice, can you then reroll the other dice? afterwards. So a classic example would be Brawler and Pro. So Brawler allows you to roll a both down. So can you roll a both down and a skull? re-roll the both down say into a skull and then use pro to re-roll the other skull to try and get a better result is, is that allowed um it, it, that's from my reading of that it says you can um, but i think that's definitely a need for a for a clarification from gdub if they happen to be watching um skill re-rolls can, skill rerolls can be used during either team's turn as appropriate, so that applies to like the catch skill, which allows you to reroll um, catches, interceptions. Um, that's fine. Um, skill. So team rerolls. We looked at this earlier, actually. Um, yep. Yeah, doesn't say you can only use one team reroll per turn, but that has been a rule since the beginning of time. So. I wonder if they would have flagged that up if that had been a change. But I won't keep banging on about it. No, we've done there. That's uh, been mentioned. And um, and we'll, uh, we'll I have to assume that that's a mistake and that will be FAQ'd. So I'm going to going to leave it there unless anyone else brings it up. I don't know how they would. Maybe in the chat. I've just been told that the sound is terrible, which is a bit of a blow. So I'll, I'll spend a moment to uh, to sort that one out. It's always been fine before. <clears throat> Maybe it's my voice. Testing, testing. I think it sounds all right. Um, it's, I'm sorry, I might, there was a bit of there was a bit of fuzz before, but I'll, sh I'll shift my microphone around and see if that gets rid of some of the uh, some of the fuzz. Cool. Thanks, Hubert. Brilliant. Yeah, it's it's. I'm I'm not I'm not a pro streamer. I I need a if anyone wants to chuck me some money and get a nice uh, an amazing microphone that'd be really cool. <laughs> All right. Um so I'll move the microphone further away from my uh, face. All right, where do we get to? Um lost my stream now. Cool. Um, right. So this is new. Here we go. Right. Deviate. Um, so deviate is a new piece of terminology on page 25. Um, so they've they've. This is really important, actually. So I'm going to I'm going to put this second like post-it note. There's a group post-it note on every page, actually, maybe, but that's fine. Um, so this is scatter. I'm just going to call this scattering. Okay. Because basically they've because if they say bounce and they say scatter later on in the rule book, then they don't um, they don't sort of clarify what that means necessarily. So I, I put some throw teammate and passing stuff together the other day, and uh, <coughs> and 
Uh, yeah, I, I miss this. So if I can miss it, then anyone can miss it, obviously. Well, wow. right. So deviate means that you roll a d6 and a d8, um, and it moves d6 squares in a d8 direction. Um, and that's what we are familiar with from the um, from the kickoff um, before. So basically, the kickoff deviates, and whenever the rulebook mentions deviation, um, then that's what it means um, and it's used in throwing now so if you get a terrible terrible pass called wildly inaccurate or called terrible for throw teammate I'm not sure why they didn't use the same terminology there um, the reasons I guess um, then it deviates from the thrower instead of instead of being like scattering it, it deviates so yeah that's a funny old thing um scattering is what we are familiar with so you roll 3d8 top professional tip is to roll all three at the same time as long as you're not near the sidelines because no matter which order you apply the 3d8s in it has the same same effect um but it does say here clearly uh you move each d8 at a time um and then see where it lands after the third d8 um, so that only matters if you're anywhere near the sidelines. Um, so if there is a chance of it scattering off the pitch, um, as, as soon as it goes off the pitch, it's treated as being off. Um, but if you're not um, at the edge of the pitch, then you should be fine to roll all of them at the same time. Okay, uh, bounce. Uh, bounce is 1d8 of scatter as before. Um, yeah, a bit of small print in there as well. All right, player status. Oh, right, so they've uh, put, got some new terminology in here as well. Um, so the tackle zone, as we know and love it, it still exists. Um, but now we've got open and marked players. And this is just trying to, I guess, to make it clearer so that they can talk about things in skills and in other rules. So instead of saying in someone's tackle zone, they just say an open player or a marked player. Um, if you lose your tackle zone, you cannot mark, right? So that's a good example. You cannot interfere with the pass action. And you cannot attempt to catch the ball. Fine. Right, prone stunned. When a player is stunned, I wonder if they've clarified, because there was always a thing about whether you can be sort of, what happens if you're stunned and then someone fouls you and you're stunned again. Um, when a player is stunned, laid face down. When a team's turn ends, any players that worse ah right here they go so they have right okay so any players that were stunned when the turn began will automatically roll over and become prone if a player became stunned during the course of their own team turn they must remain stunned until the end of their team's next turn okay so that's a clarification that wasn't in the previous rule book so this can apply to it used to be able to apply to vampires who could who used to be able to bloodlust um, but now they can't anymore anyway but it most often applies to fouls so if a player is stunned and you foul them that means they do not unstun at the end of their turn so that is an important um, important rule i feel i should be like scribbling on the book or something but it's too new and shiny so i won't do that but there yeah, that's a that's definitely a thing um dumpty dumpty dum place prone um, is not a turnover unless you have the ball. Do, 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 falling over. Um, when a player falls over, self-inflicted, causes a turnover. So they do duplicate things, and that's absolutely fine. Better to say things twice than not enough. Um, armor rolls, injury rolls, blah, blah, blah. Players are often knocked down. So being knocked down definitely causes a turnover. Do, do, do. Yeah, oh, good. I love these pictures. I really like them. Fantastic. I hadn't seen these pictures before. Um, it's just, uh, no, I, hadn't, I hadn't looked at them in, in depth anyway. Right, here we go. Right, so here we go. We have a passing characteristic. Ooh, it's a, a surprise thing. Um, I just did, just in terms of um, getting, getting things out there, obviously the rules were leaked back in July. Um, so I have, I have been using that, but um, you know, but now it's it's put away and the, the book is my thing from now on um, rather than looking at the leaks. The leaks was quite helpful because it meant you could I could put spreadsheets together and people could talk about the rules and so on. So it's so very helpful to whoever did that. But don't do it again because it's illegal and bad. Anyway, the passing stat. Um, so you've got a minimum and a maximum. Uh, so this, oh yeah, so this is a change. So you've got move nine maximum now. Um, 
it's got movement nine maximum, so that stops your natural one turners. So a natural one turner who has is someone who had move ten and sprint skill, so they could move thirteen squares in a turn. So you could just put them on the line of scrimmage, give them the ball, and they run in, assuming you blitz someone out of the way or something in, in the meantime. Um, so that's good. That's gone. Basically, I, I don't think apart from a few Skaven players who might miss it, I, I think in general people will not be missing that as a thing. Um, yeah, so we've got this passing stat now, so now throwers are good at passing and not necessarily very good at dodging, and similarly, if you're good at dodging, doesn't mean you're good at passing, so there's that separation there. Um, yeah, I played, a, I played a game with these rules the other day, and it was the armor roll that, that we most often noticed as being a, a change. So I would say, armor oh, 8 plus, and he would say, right, okay, so is that the same as armor 7? Yes, it is. Right, okay, fine. So, um, so lots of these, the, the stats haven't changed, just the way they're presented is, has changed. Uh, fine, they say again, if the rules ever instruct you to divide a dice roll anyway, oh, any modifiers that also apply to the roll should be applied after the roll has been divided. If the rules ever instruct you to divide a dice roll, any modifiers that also apply to the roll should be applied after the roll has been divided. I don't see the relevance of that at the moment, but I'm sure it will become relevant later. Um, hi, Chris. Uh, good day for staying in, absolutely. Freezing, freezing fog in uh, in Swindon and probably the rest of the country, and also we're in lockdown, so you know, also a good day for staying in. So I popped to the shop, who were doing click collect, good old Firestorm Swindon, shout out to them, um, and they gave me their stuff. They had a, they had a pile of stuff to give out, and they had a brilliant Blood Bowl display, um, which I should have got a selfie with, but um, but I was trying to get it out because of you know lockdown. Right, uh, what could possibly go wrong? So if you roll a one is a fail. So remember that when testing against a player's agility or passing, any role of a natural one is a fail. Okay, cool. So that sort of codifies a bit more the, the woolly bit from earlier. <clears throat> so that's fine. Um, if a player has a passing of, of hyphen, so <laughs> this was fun when putting my spreadsheet together, but um, so if a player has a pass of hyphen, um, then you then the player can't do any passing, they automatically fumble. So this is like for a Tomb Guardian or something like that. Um, right, cool. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, armor rolls. Do, do, do. Other, <laughs> right, okay, cool. Armor can also represent how tough a player is. Some players may appear lightly armored, but have a high armor value characteristic. Others may appear very heavily armored, yet have a low AV characteristic, showing that in spite of their kit, they are delicate and prone to injury. So there's quite a few options. There's quite a few players who, or models, who would have a high armor, like a troll, basically, or a tree man, who don't wear any armor, but they are tough. Um, I can't think of any that have lots of armor. Maybe maybe some of the new goblins are quite heavily armoured, um, but it's it's slightly rubbish armour, maybe. I don't know. Um, do, 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 do. Right, I'm just going to do something. I'm just going to get that thing. Actually, no, it doesn't matter. I will ignore that. All right, cool. Um, yeah, what happens if a player with passing hyphen takes a passing up? Yeah, so we'll, we'll answer questions as we go through there. Um, that is not a bad one, but I think basically they basically they can't. Um, so I'm going to be putting together a NAF clarifications thing that is that obviously won't this won't apply to. But in my league, basically, if you roll, so this would only apply in leagues, um, and it's a really really niche case because what you'd have to do is start with someone who can't pass at all, and then spend a load of star player points on them to try and get a a characteristic and then instead of choosing a secondary skill when you rolled passing you would take the pass um and so i would I, I would almost say things like that are so niche as to be irrelevant personally um but but for but for rules purists um then i i would rule it as league commissioner um that you have to roll it again it's like um like the interaction between frenzy and grab you can't have frenzy and grab and so there's a bit in skills later where you um 
where you re-roll a skill basically if if you have frenzy and you roll grab you have to re-roll it if you have grab and you roll frenzy you have to re-roll it so re-roll is the answer but it may not be the answer in the book but um it's it's one that's been flagged to games workshop as a as a thing possibly i'm not sure it has actually because it's so niche um skills traits so traits have come back i think this is uh lrb3 maybe something like that where these disappeared um um because they just became skills um but they became extraordinary skills but now they're called traits basically they're skills you can't take um and for, for my for my money there's a few too many of them it, they because they, they're often quite like one use like pogo stick and there's like uh, two players in the game who've got pogo stick and so I, I, I'm, I'm quite a fan of, of slimmed down rules and so if there are too many traits it gets a bit silly like projectile vomit has just appeared for the trolls um, which is fine but I don't think it was needed particularly however we did play the game the other day and um, realized that vomit is not a turn so if you vomit down yourself we've all been there um, if you vomit down yourself um, then you it's not a turnover um, in Blood Bowl, it is in life. Um, so you should always vomit before scoring. If you have a troll um, and you have a, a walk in for the score, then it's a good idea to vomit on someone before you do that. Top tip. Cool, that's page done. All right, here we have a shiny, shiny blue team draft list. Um, and they shared the bloodbowl.com shared this on their social media the other day. Um, and it was like, what? What is that? I had, I don't, there was not that much blue ink in the world. Um, so I've put one together as well. Let's just see what we're doing here. Um, not that one. So this is the, this is the, that's uh, sort of their one. Um, and just to just to flag it up, this is this is this is my one. Um, so yeah, my one my one's got a. Um, yeah, it's got it's got space to track a few more things on there, I think. Um, so there's a few things that um, are possibly harder. Yeah, that you basically it's this it's this area on the um, on the right hand side that is is hard to track on there. You can't you can't track how many things they've done in that in that game, um, how many completions, how many deflections, how many casual casualties they've caused, which obviously you need for league. Um, and mine's mostly white. Um, there is this bit that's blue over here, but you can make that unblue if you want to. Um, so yeah, I've stuck I've stuck one of those together. Um, where's my button? There it is. Cool. But back to theirs. Um, team. Right now, this is a funny old thing because basically, as a, as a new player, I would have really liked to have a section here that says out of the box, play with these two things. And to be honest, actually, I haven't got the box, so I'm entirely um, willing to be corrected on the fact that there is something in the box that's like a quick quick starter thing maybe i should have watched some unboxes unboxings rather than diving into myself but um so cool if there's an if there is a quick start play through this then that would be really good because what we've what we've just done is we've we've sort of started with an introduction to the rules and then we jump into drafting a blood bowl team which is which is not a good way of um learning stuff i don't think but there we go so what have we got on here so we've got um we've got team badge team rerolls um is there any dedicated there's no dedicated fans on here no 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 list of dedicated fans so as a as a as roster it's oh there is dedicated fans my apologies yeah it's down there um so over here we have the things that count towards team value over here we have the things that don't count towards team value so um so treasury doesn't count towards team value and now your fan factor doesn't count either well it's not called fan factor Fan factor is something else. So dedicated fans don't count towards um, your um, team value anymore. So that's a page of stuff. Du, du, du. Uh, and then on the back, oh, this is this is like in the olden days. So they've they've always had this basically where you keep a list of your uh, opponents and and so on. Um, there used to be a pad of them that came in in third edition. There was like you got a pad of stuff, um, but now you'd have to print those out. I, I just, it's everything's electronic nowadays. Ideally, there would be a Blood Bowl app where you could do all of this, but you know there isn't. As far as well, there was there was a Blood Bowl app, but it's gone gone defunct. But 
if Games Workshop wants to throw some money at it, that would be marvellous. Um, and I've got a spreadsheet for keeping track of stuff like that if you if you want to use it uh, on sano638.co.uk. I try not to do the whole like and subscribe thing, but maybe I should more often. Like and subscribe, you know you want to. Oh, that's a YouTube. That's not even Twitch. Subscribe on Twitch. But Right. Okie dokie. Drafting a team. You've got to have 11 players. Um, takes you through the types of players, which is just sort of fluff, really, and letting you know about things. Um, sideline models. Yeah, the sideline model. It comes with two refs. Um, so with the, two, the two refs that are in the box don't have any impact at the moment. As far as I can tell, um, you can buy 0 to 8 rerolls, cost double still. I thought it might say something about only using one reroll per turn, but it doesn't. Sideline staff you hire, the coach is you. Um, you can buy assistant coaches. So, assistant coaches and cheerleaders have changed um, in that now um, a seven is coaching. I think I'll get to the kickoff table in a minute, but basically, coaches are better than cheerleaders now i want to say um is your kickoff table there it is uh yeah so coaching coaching is on a seven and gets you the reroll. and so coaches are better than cheerleaders now um you can have six coaches you can have 12 cheerleaders they're still ten thousand. um yeah and i think you can get them for inducements as twenty thousand. but we'll get to that later apothecary um yep and so it says in the it says in the team rosters whether you can buy an apothecary or not uh treasury that's fine dedicated fans so you you start with one dedicated fan um and then it goes up and it goes down can it go below one so you can buy um when the team's drafted it can improve its dedicated fans characteristic by one up to a maximum of six at ten thousand pounds each Right, okay, so the second second sentence is an example. Yeah, so you could buy more fans at the beginning. Um, for a long time, there's been no point in doing this because you can just lose them. Um, fantastic. Right, now this is quite nice from a statistical point of view and a, and a thing um, uh, and a way of talking about stuff, terminology. So you've got a team value and then you've got a current team value. So current team value doesn't include Miss Next Games. Um, is that all that it involves? Yeah. Yeah, so this is, yeah, so basically the difference between team value and current team value is just those players who are missing the next game. The number of dedicated fans, the amount of gold pieces held in the treasury do not add anything to team value. So that's cool. Um, just mentions about inducements. So it mentions exhibition play for the first time. So exhibition play is basically tournament play, where you play a one-off game. Um, and it says you could spend as much as little on your draft team budget as you wish on inducements. Um, so that's codifying how tournaments have used inducements for, for ages. The rules of Blood Bowl. The rules of Blood Bowl. Right. Um, right, so the fans. Right, so now you get fan factors. So you roll a D3 and you add your dedicated fans characteristics. Now, um, the new thing with this is that in, in Tournament Blood Bowl, you basically didn't have to write anything down. Everything was done with tokens. So there's now uh, there's now a need to write down fan factor unless unless someone comes up with a piece of swag. So it might be the NAF it might be the NAF giveaway for next year is a is a fan factor indicator, which would basically need to go somewhere between um, two and what's the maximum fan factor? I don't I wonder if there is a maximum fan factor. We'll find out later. Question for later. Um, so maximum fan factor. So in a tournament, yeah, in a tournament, I don't know. Would you take another fan factor? So you might get, might have to go up to six or something realistically. But um, in a league, obviously, you could have a massive amount of fan factor. But but it's something basically you need to keep a record of at at, at some point because it will have an impact, um, which is not a big deal. Um, it just means you write, need to write it down on a piece of paper somewhere. Um, but it's a new piece of admin, which I don't really like. Cool. Whether both coaches roll a d6, and that's interesting. That's what's happened in tournaments for ages. Um, I think in the previous rule book it just said roll two d6 for weather, but now it's both coaches roll a d6 and add them together, which is I don't know. Whatever. Um, take on journeyman. Right. This is new. Is this new? 
Yes, if a team, yeah, step three, if a team cannot field 11 players, the team temporarily takes on, ah, right, sorry. So this is, so what we've got here is we've got a section for pregame and then the pregame sequence is, is um, explained in more detail. So I was like, is that the full explanation of the pregame sequence? Um, but actually it says, this is the summary of it. And then it goes over it in, in more detail. Um, so fan factor is fine. Weather, has the weather table changed? Sweltering heat has changed. Um, so sweltering heat is less game breaking now, and that's a, a theme from the kickoff table in general. So the weather applies to that as well. So sweltering heat is now just D3 random players. Um, when a drive ends are placed in the reserves box, they must miss the next drive. Okay, so it's just D3 players. Um, very sunny is the same. Perfect is fine. Pouring rain, minus one. Every time a player makes an agility test to catch or pick up the ball or attempts to interfere. Fine. Yep, same as before. Blizzard, minus one to rushing, which is the new name for going for it. And just quick and short passes. So the only change to the weather table is sweltering heat has been nerfed, which is, uh, I think you'd be daft to disagree with that, really. Um, because sweltering heat could affect like one team much worse than others. And, but yeah, this way it's D3 from each team um, makes it less game breaking which is good um it will make use of temporary players so now this is a change from the previous rule book uh, journeymen are now compulsory so before hiring star players and before hiring inducements you have to hire journeymen uh, not to 12 or not to 16 option uh, they gain loner four plus so that's a new thing loner now comes with a three plus four plus or five plus depending on how what they have to roll to use a reroll um Journeyman can go above 16. A journeyman does count towards your calculated team value. A team draft of exhibition play must contain at least 11 players. Yep, fine. Um, if one team, right now we're getting to inducements. This is ah, juicy, inducements. Right, thanks, Sid. Uh, technically, fan factor doesn't have a cap. With the way it gets updated, you can never have more than six. So if, it's, if it goes to seven, you will reduce it by one. Thanks, Sid. Fantastic. We'll get that in the post game sequence bit. Yeah, I thought that might be the case. So maximum. So it's not maximum fan fact, it's the maximum dedicated fans. Yes, yeah, so the maximum dedicated fans is six. Cool. So that means the maximum fan factor is nine. So the maximum difference in fan factor is seven. And it's actually the difference in fan factor that you need to record. So we'll need a, we need a, a NAF eight sided dice with zero to seven on it um i say naf could be a uh, charlie victor product thing so you can have that one duncan um as a uh, so it's basically a d8 which is numbered from zero to seven and represents the fan factor difference which is what which is what matters i think we'll get to that later juicy inducements right um So if one team has a lower calculated team value, it is given petty cash. The amount of petty cash given is exactly equal to the difference in calculated team value between the two teams. So you get your petty cash. Uh, I tell you what, there's a flow chart coming here. There's a flow chart. I've already got two flow charts. I've got a throw teammate one and a passing one. There's going to be an inducements one. Decided. Um, oh, it just occurred to me actually that I should just do a quick tweet to say that I am now did i do that before um cool uh, i should have a flanky to do this for me really what's the point in having children if you can't um Get them to do stuff right 40 minutes in and we've made it to page 40 ish 38 um right back in the room all right so you you get some petty cash then you spend treasury uh, and then you and then the underdog gets prayers to nuffle so for every full 50k of the difference in recalculated team value so you've got calculated team value and then you've got recalculated team value which is basically only if 
if um, oh so it's after people have spent treasury and after the um, the original underdog so you've got your original underdog and your new underdog so the original underdog gets given some some cash then both teams can spend cash and then for every full 50k difference in the recalculated team value then you get a roll on this prayers to nuffle table which is quite nice so there is a league prayers to nuffle table and then there is an exhibition prayers to nuffle table later which is the one that i guess will be used in tournaments because exhibition play is a proxy for tournament play love these pictures really cool oh i bought the necro team that reminds me the other the other bit of swag that i got was the uh was the necro team i'm going to split with um, my friend jip and um, because i want these wraiths because i love the bed sheets he wants some werewolves and uh, i think some golems as well and then we'll figure out what to do with the rest at some point tournament prize maybe come to cake bowl or saw bowl or coffee cup and you might end up with some random zombies right prayers to nuffle let's have a quick uh, determined kicking team right every game of blood so this was raised on the blood bowl community um why would purchasing inducements change your um so so basically you purchasing inducements doesn't but you it's your it's your cash that you have so you start with your um original team value here we go time for some maths so your You'll start with T value. So you've got team team A and team B. So this one's got 1,200 and this one's got 1,000. Okay. So this one gets free cash, which gives you 200. Um, and so now they're equal. And then you choose to spend money. So this one spends 50K on inducements because he wants a babe. And this one spends uh, 400k in inducements because he wants a superstar player. So that is your new calculated TV. Um, and that's 1250. And so then we've got, oh, I should have done different numbers. No, oh, it doesn't matter. So we've got 350. And so that is seven rolls on the uh, press nuffle table. Okay, so that's um, a bit of maths there. There we go. So that's how it works um, in the inducements phase, which is nice and clear. Um, hope that helps. Hi, Steve, as well. Steve, I delivered Steve's box this morning, and uh, he was very excited. <laughs> right. So, um, so basically, these are quite fun. This is where you got your D16, and so that's another reason for having the D16. Well done, Games Workshop, for actually making this dice useful. Um, I'm not actually going to go through these in massive detail, but they're quite. You could you could read those later. But they're basically things that happen um, um, during a drive. Um, the one thing I am going to look at is how often, how long they last for. So this one is until the end of. So they're all equally likely. So those who are used to using the kickoff table are used to saying right. Um, so the ones at each end are less likely, but in fact, because it's a D16, all of these are equally likely. There's your basic probability. Um, 6%, 6 percent, 6.16 recurring percent, I think. Um, so, so this one is until the end of the half, until the end of the drive. This one until the end of the drive, end of the game. So they they have various lengths. So basically, one of the things that people were flagging was that you could have all of these rolls, and some of them might be till the end of the drive. So if you're playing a Wood Elf team, and you got loads of until the end of the drive things, then you could just they could score against you in two turns, and then your inducements bonus would be wiped out. So we've got a sort of mixture there. So actually, let's do. I need a I need a pad. Is what I need. Let's have a look. So. I'll go get a pad when I get a cup of tea, I think. So here's my prayers to Nuffle. And we've got drive, we've got half, and then we've got game. So the first one is on the end of the half. Second one is on the end of the drive, which is to do with friendly refs. Um, stiletto is end of drive. Iron Man is end of game. Knuckle Dusters is end of drive. Bad Habits, end of drive. Creasy cleats, end of drive. Uh, blessed statue of Nuffle, which people are going to call blessed, but I think it's got to be blessed. Let me check. Blessed, blessed statue, blessed statue. No, I don't know. End of the drive is blessed statue. Blessed. It's really hard to say. Blessed statue. Moles under the pitch, end of the half. Perfect passing is under the game. 
Oh, that's quite cool. You get two star player points instead of one. Brilliant. Um, it should be called like it should be called passing um, appreciation or something. Maybe fan interaction until the end of the drive. Necessary violence end of the drive. Falling frenzy end of the drive. Throw a rock end of the drive. And that's the one that's been really controversial because it mentions stalling. Under scrutiny is end of the half, and then intensive training end of the game. So what we can see there of the of the sixteen, we've got ten that only have an impact um, until the end of the drive. So that's a fairly high probability that uh, well this advantage you get from these inducements um, gets wiped out by a, a two turn score. But then you know, thinking sensibly about it, that could happen if you had like Fez glitch <laughs> before he would just die anyway. Roxana could easily just roll a one on a leap and then die as well. Um, so, and Wizard was, I guess, one shot, so that could be gone the first couple of turns. Wizard is still around, um, but I guess it's quite, it's quite extreme, I guess. Um, and and maybe maybe that's by design actually, because um, if you if you're playing against a Wood Elf or high off priority and whatever you want them to score in two turns so if you've got a pile of stuff that's saying score in two turns then that's really good because it gives you seven turns to score back and then eight turns to score a second for your classic 2-1 grind which is what we all love about blood bowl cool um yeah this one was raised on um blood bowl community earlier this is real rules lawyering here in that it doesn't actually say how you decide which is the kicking team which is the receiving team so it says every game starts with a coin toss to determine which team is the kicking team and which is the receiving team but then it doesn't say do you do you win like if you win you get to choose which is the way it's been played um, but it doesn't actually say that in here so you could take it as red and if you were if, if you had if you just bought the book and you had no idea about sport or how to play the game um, then you could take it as 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 whoever rolls highest kicks or whoever high, rolls highest receives um but it's, so again not a huge oversight but a slight i think we'll call that one a slight oversight not as bad as the team we roll on it's pretty bad all right so once the coin tosses roll off happen start a drive too many players this has been codified and you can't see it because it's over there too many players um so it now says any extra players get sent off for committing a foul. So you get sent off, basically, you get sent off. Which players are sent off is decided by the coach of the opposing team. So this is incredibly harsh because this has always just been randomized before. Um, yeah, it's always, it's always been randomized, but now it says the opponent po player chooses which of your players get sent off. And like, I, I think this one might go the way of uh, um, can't even remember what it's called because it's not even used. Um, a complete brain fail. What am I talking about? The um, legal procedure. That's it. So legal procedure was basically not used by anyone. And I think this too many players rule might be house ruled out. Um, I think it's probably going to be house ruled out of yeah legal procedure. Thanks, Trango. Um, it it may it's going to be house ruled out of my local league. Because it's stupid, um, and we'll see what happens with and, and tournaments that I play at. It's like, no, that's that's not that's not good. That's yeah. I suppose it's going to make people count their players, but it just seems I don't know. It'll be really interesting. Um, hopefully, I will go to tournaments before I play in tournament before I organise tournaments, and we'll just see how this gets treated by by people. To be honest, I'm a, I'm more often set up with too few players, so I suppose that's not been codified in there. Um. What would be really cool is if 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 you ended up with no forget that I won't go there right um, line of scrimmage now this is interesting actually because in the this is wrong in the video um, see what they call the line of scrimmage within the center oh so they call it the center field okay fine so because I always played that the line of scrimmage was the seven squares in the middle um, but they're calling that the center field adjacent to the line of scrimmage so now in in blood bowl terminology official blood bowl terminology the line of scrimmage goes all the way across the pitch and the center field is the seven squares in the middle um cool right the kicking player kicking player cannot be in the line of scrimmage 
ah, this is new. So there's all these little nuances that we're just we're just getting from these, um, which ideally someone would be writing down. Maybe I'll write them down at some point. But I'm, I'm mostly writing down the things that are um, that need clarifying. But this is a new thing. So the kicking player cannot be on the line of scrimmage unless there are only three players on the pitch, three or fewer players on the pitch. Well, I'm using fewer rather than less top-notch games workshopping. Um, so this means that if you have a player with kick, then they can be on the line of scrimmage and they can still use kick. Um, as far as I can tell, let's have a quick look up in the old, actually what I will use this for. This is what this is what this is need for because the skills are not right at the back of the thing, the of the book. So the skills section is sort of page 80 or odd. It's sticky. Why is it sticking together? That's well, just new and new and fun. Right. Uh, so kick is a general skill. So it's just going to quickly check if kick. Uh, yeah, fine. So if this player is nominated to be the kicking player, fantastic. So um, so if you only have three players, so again, very niche. If you only have three players, then um, the person with kick can be on the line of scrimmage and still use it. Uh, deviates kickoff event table once the kickoff event table has been resolved it gets caught so that's fine touchbacks a touch, kickoff player a kickoff must land safely in the receiving team's half uh, touchback when a touchback is called no agility is required should it ever occur uh, so they've codified this should it ever occur that there is no standing player the ball is given to a prone or stunned player and will bounce from them so that's fine Right, changes to the kickoff table, get the ref is the same. Um, riot has become timeout, marginal change there. Uh, perfect defense has been nerfed, so it's not the whole team, it's just D3 plus three open players. Um, so practice game I played the other day, this is all my players still, except the ones on the line of scrimmage. So it's only open players that can be moved and it's D3 plus three. High kick's the same, uh, except it has to be an open player, which I think it was before. So let's go. Yeah, sticky pages. Sorry, Chris. It was. Uh, it, I think it's glue. I think it's glue from the uh, from the acetate binding stuff. Um, cheering fans is D6 plus cheerleaders. Nothing to do with fan factors, and they get a roll on the prayers to nuffle table. Um, if you roll a result that's currently in effect, you must re-roll it. Um, if you roll a result that's rolled previously but since expired, there is no need to re-roll it. Fantastic. So seven is brilliant coaching. So that's D6 plus assistant coaches. Yep. Um, gets you an extra reroll. Changing weather is now an eight rather than a seven. If the weather conditions are perfect conditions, the ball will scatter before landing. Yep, so that's the extra D8 to scatter. Quick snap is D3 plus three open players. So that again, that's a nerf to one turners basically. So if you set up for a one turner and then you rolled a quick snap it was like ha, my one turn had just got easier whoop, whoop. and that's not the case anymore because it's only open players and it's only d3 plus three of them blitz is d3 plus three open players which it was open players before but now previously it was the whole half the whole team sorry uh, but now it's d3 plus three um so you can't camp your entire team in the other in the opponent's half you just camp one or two player, do a potato play basically where you run someone forward. So that's cool. Um, one thing you can't do in the blitz, you can throw teammate, you can blitz, but you can't um, you can't foul because it says you can you can move, and then you can blitz, you can throw teammate, but you can't. Um... That's interesting. Ah, right. Now I think this is a change actually. So I'm, I'm picking these up as we go through. It's only, it's only really in a sort of deep dive like this that you, you pick things up. Um, I think you can't use a team reroll on a blitz anymore based on that because it doesn't say you get a um, it doesn't say you get an extra turn. I'm sorry. Uh, by, apologies in advance. Um, um, oh, we got some random spam. Excellent. I need to find a way of getting rid of random spam on my chat, but um, maybe they'll disappear later. Um, oh, and they've lost my thread as well. What's looking like? Um, yeah, apologies in advance if anyone knows all of these things already, because there were obviously because of the leak, people have made lists and lists of things that have changed. Um, but this is this is me doing that basically, but um, but legally, um, which is good, I think. Right, I'm just going to see if I can get rid of the random spam, which is mildly irritating. Maybe maybe some pro can tell me if. Um, 
um, if there's a way of getting rid of those. Um, can you report a comment? Yeah, no, you can't. Um, no, you can't report a comment, can't. Um, yeah, fine. Whatever. Um, I'll think about that later, I expect. Horrible spammers. Um, cool. Yeah, yeah, Spikey's agreeing. Nobody will want a blitz. Thanks, Spikey. <laughs> At this point, and that's the end of the kickoff table. Uh, pitch invasion. All oh, right, okay. No, we'll just do this, and then I will take a quick break. Um, officious ref. Um, so here, D6 and fan factor. So this is where your fan factor differential, as I'm going to call it. No one's going to stop me. Um, that's where this comes. So it's 11 and 12. So a one in um, one in 18 on the officious ref and a one in 36 on pitch invasion. Um, and that's the only time that fan factor has been referred to as yet. So I think that's the only time it comes into play. So so it's an extra and it's an extra record. Channel owner should be able to delete comments. See if I can do that. I'm right clicking. I can't see how to delete comments. Uh, yeah, I can't do that. Yeah, chat settings. Uh, eh, eh, eh. Followers only chat. Uh, eh, la, 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 la. Interesting. Uh, made it through anyway. Right, at this point I am going to take a quick break, I think. Um, if you copy their username, you can do ban username. All right, cool. I will have a play with that shortly. Um, but for the moment... Sorry, I should have done this before, didn't think of it. Um, no font. Uh, let's get rid of that. Put that down there. Cool. And I'll be back shortly.
Right, back in the room, and let's turn the old book cam back on, and turn the old brake off, and switch over back to the book. There we go. Fantastic. So, a question um, from Steve. Uh, coaches are worse because it's now D6 to D3, but also better because it's a 7, not 8. Are coaches better or worse? Or just the same? I don't know. Someone's going to have to do the maths on that. Um, well, it's it's always about the differential, isn't it? So, um, so I don't know if that matters or not. Morning, Grumpy Old Brian. How are we doing? It's almost, oh, it's lunchtime. It's 12 o'clock, so we're now into afternoon. Uh, yeah, I don't know if they're better or worse. They're always just sort of bits as, anyway. Oh, while we're talking about bits, is that I put some tournament rosters together the other day and I had 5K left to spend. So I'm going to recommend to, to, to TOs. Um, just sort my microphone out in case it goes rubbish again. And also 